Good morning. Welcome to the Responding to COVID-19 webinar series. Today's topic is working remote, sharing tips and tools to keep business continuity. This is our eighth installment in a series of webinars focused on sharing guidance on how the Orlando business community can best respond to the realities of COVID-19. I'm Sheena Fowler, Vice President of Innovation at the Orlando Economic Partnership and convener of the Orlando Tech Council. It's my pleasure to be hosting today's webinar with such esteemed guest speakers. I will be introducing them shortly. Thank you all for attending, and I anticipate this to be a highly informative webinar, one that touches just about everyone dealing with this pandemic. For several weeks now, the Orlando Economic Partnership has been working around the clock to help local businesses, providing critical information and resources while connecting them to the assistance to help reduce the impact of COVID-19. Like many businesses, the Orlando region and across the country, we're working remote. As our community has ramped up to work remotely, new best practices have emerged to address the realities of virtual work, including corporate culture and impacted productivity. Today's webinar will feature tech leaders from Blue Wave, Fat Merchant, Epos Now, Accent Technologies, and Statusphere, all of whom are rising to the virtual occasion. We hope this webinar will provide you and your teams great insight and the best practices for remote work. Throughout the webinar, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions using the Q&A feature, and we'll have a dedicated time for Q&A at the end. I'll be watching for your questions throughout the webinar, so please be sure to submit them. Before we begin, I want to make sure you're aware of our COVID-19 Resource Center. You can find it at orlando.org slash COVID-19. This is a one-stop shop with information, resources, and important links. We'll also be sharing a resource guide on some of the tools we talk about on today's webinar. Well, let's get started. As I mentioned earlier, we're joined today by several of the Orlando region's tech leaders. We have Cassandra King, recruiting manager at Blue Wave and a UCF grad. She also works on projects like Orlando Devs and Project Orlando. PJ Spelios joins us as vice president from Fat Merchant, a subscription-based integrated payment technology platform well known in the Orlando region. David Duncan is vice president of sales at Epos Now, and Epos Now is a results-driven sales leader with a proven track record of 100% annual growth for five years. Graham Gill is the Vice President of Customer Success at Accent Technologies, a consumer-centric senior leader with over 20 years of experience developing and leading high-performance teams. And Kristen Wiley is the founder and CEO of Statusphere. She's an award-winning marketer, startup founder, and speaker. Thank you for joining us today. Let's kick things off with a question for all of you. What was the experience getting your team scaled to working remotely as a result of the pandemic? Can you guys hear me? Now we can. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. So it's been a bit, bit, definitely a bit of a challenge over the last uh, few weeks. Um, you know, our customers are small businesses as well. So we sell to a lot of restaurants, bars, uh, retail stores, fashion businesses, a lot of small businesses really. So we kind of got, you know, got the word from the UK government a bit earlier because we have a UK branch as well. Um, so we were a bit fortunate in that respect that we had a bit of a heads up because things started happening in Europe a lot quicker. Um, so, you know, it was just about acting as calmly and collectively as possible and migrating everyone, you know, you know, to their home environment. Have they got the right equipment? Um, you know, is their mental health well-being going to be okay? What are the kind of processes for checking up with them throughout the day, throughout the week? And it's almost been four weeks now. So... Um, you know, that's been one of the hardest things, I think, you know, we've got a workforce of around 50 people over here. So uh, migrating 50 people over to work from home, checking in on them daily, having a lot of video conferencing, kind of like what we're doing now, but even the one to ones, the pipeline reviews, the huddles, everything that we've been doing daily has been done by video. And um, having a lot of communication from leadership and managers. Um, so over communicating every day, doing video updates at the end of the day for the guys virtual happy hours on a Friday, for example. So really just making it feel like we are still in the office and we are still communicating with each other uh, and doubling down on those efforts for communication. Because there, there are some people struggling out there. Some of our employees are finding it a lot more difficult than others. And so it's really just making sure that we're checking in on those employees and looking after them. So I think that's, that's been the biggest challenge. And 
the biggest thing we're aware of at the moment at EPOS now. Oh, thank you. Graham, what about you? Yeah, one of the things that Accent Technologies has done, we, we sort of had, like David, the heads up as well that this was coming. We have a hybrid uh, office structure to start with. So we have folks that are up in the Northeast or are already working remote, but we took a, a concerted effort to really have a daily stand up, um, kind of like David mentioned, where we bring everyone in, in the morning, we review the good news, um, the positive uh, outcomes that, from the previous days. And we've really made sure that all of our employees are you know, well set up at home. We've sent keyboards, monitors, uh, other supplies to, to folks to make sure that they're at least comfortable, um, that they have dedicated space and, and work environment. So it's it's been a a little bit of a, a challenge, right? I think when you hear the outside news, it it, it it can be a downer, but we really worked on the spirits and the mental aspect, as David mentioned as well, around this. Yeah, great. And PJ, how's it been for you all at Fat Merchant? Oh, we've been doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, you know, we've been preparing from a business continuity perspective kind of in advance. We saw it coming, and so we were preparing our team, you know, bring your laptops home every night. Um, you know, thank God we are able to fully function remotely. Uh, it's been going really well. We're utilizing all the tools, you know, kind of what David said earlier about, you know, the Zoom video meetings every morning. Um, we have Slack, uh, Monday.com. We're fully utilizing all those tools um, and also um, really keeping in line with the um meetings that we always had scheduled. We just kept them going. Our Monday pump-ups, our uh, Friday all-hands. We also integrated um, some fitness routines. We have fitness every day, Monday through Friday. We've got um, a mind and body series. So we have um, an organizational psychologist that um, jumps in. So we're really keeping the team engaged. So the only difference is we're physically separated, but we I almost see some of the people more often now um, with all that we're doing for everyone. So uh, keeping the morale high and, and things are going well. That's wonderful. Yeah, keeping morale high is, is one of the more interesting things and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Kristen, I wanna jump to you now. How have you been? Yeah, so yeah. We're, oh. can you hear me? Sorry, yep. okay, look, my computer cut out a second. Um, yeah, so we're a team of 17 of us total. Five of us were remote, um, and then 12 were in the office. Uh, we have two interns and then 10 core team members. So it was interesting. We started all working remote um, around when everyone else did, uh, and it's been an adjustment, but it's been also, I agree with what PJ was saying. I think especially our remote team is loving it because they're getting to see and getting to know our um, team that's in the office more. So that's been a weird benefit. Uh, we do our morning check-ins and we, something we do to kind of keep morale high and to keep, uh, you know, continuity of the team. We, we talk about not just work things. We try to also like leave a section to talk about fun movies people are watching, whether it's Tiger King or whatever's happening. And we try to like leave at least 20 minutes for everyone to engage because our, our, um, our team is very social and I think misses that piece and that's really helped us a lot uh, doing those morning check-ins. Great. And Cassandra, Blue Wave, how has it, how's the transition been? Yeah, I mean, overall, it's been pretty good. We were lucky just with the technology side because we had a lot of that implemented already. Different, you know, everyone had laptops and Slack. We were using pretty heavily. Even video calls, we're always doing them with candidates and clients. But um, definitely just the social part of it was difficult for sure. Everyone's used to hanging out. Obviously, we love talking to people in the recruiting world. So that was a little bit of a challenge and we're working on it. But um, like everyone said, just trying to keep things as normal as Yes, they can be right now and um, continuing with our normally scheduled meetings and um, just staying on video calls and still doing that social aspect of it all. Great. So let's transition to talk a little bit more in depth about the tools that you have found that have been really helpful. Graham, let's start with you. What are some of the tools that, that you have seen both with your business and others that have been helpful in this remote workforce? Yeah, I think we, we've, we've touched on a few of them, uh, Zoom, GoToMeeting, any of the, the communication tools. But I think it's also really important to, as you're, you're pushing folks out uh, away from the office, to understand their communication methods. So I still have a lot of folks that I text with. Uh, I have folks that will pick up the phone. So it's really understanding the communication methods of your individual teammates and, and coworkers. That I think is more important than the tools itself. Um, 
obviously scheduling time is super important for folks and understanding their work habits. Uh, you know, folks have kids at home, folks have, you know, additional responsibilities helping maybe their elderly parents. So it's really the, the communication and understanding, you know, the best way to get in touch with folks that's made our jobs really successful within our organization. And we've, we've had almost after the first four or five days and business kind of settled in as normal, we've, we've really got a great flow and we have not missed a beat. I, I would echo comments of the panelists that we, we continue to actually learn more about each other in this environment than if we were in the office. Oh, that's fantastic. PJ, what about Fat Merchant? Are there any tools that, that you all have instituted that are maybe new to this process or continuing with what you had already instated? You know, we're, yeah. um, nothing new uh, to my knowledge. Some of the other teams, you know, we, we kind of keep it up to the teams to say like, you know, utilize whatever it is that you need and we're open-minded to that. However, you know, Slack is huge with us. Obviously the Zoom, Monday.com, our CRM technologies, of course, I utilize Spark higher for video, uh, direct video interviewing. So utilizing those just, it doesn't really feel that different um, from that perspective as far as the tools go. But again, to the other panelists point, it's very much communication is key. Definitely have to be almost more uh, deliberate on the, the direct communication in Slack, um, be very more clear. It, it's almost like utilizing those tools in a, in a, in a, a different way, but still utilizing them. Oh, that's great. Yeah, just being a little bit more specific. Paint the picture. Cassandra, Blue Wave, um, you all have been, you know, I know there were, and Fat Merchant too, you had an office move planned right around now. What tools have you guys been, have you been using? As far as tools, I mean, Slack is a big one for sure with us and just no new technologies, I would say, but using what we have a lot more. You know, we did have a pretty small office, so we're all working really closely together and communicating a lot face-to-face -face when we're in the office. So um, keeping it pretty normal as far as Slack and Zoom and um, jumping on a lot of FaceTimes. Every call is a video call at this point, but um, a lot of just over communication because everyone works really closely together all the time. Oh, that's great. And we'll have a resource guide on some of the tools that our friends at Project Orlando have put together for us. So we'll be sure to share that on a resource page. Uh, Duncan, Kristen, is there anything you want to add in the tools you haven't referenced yet? Kristen, you've got one to add? Um, yeah, I, we use the tool called Monday. I don't know if anyone's ever used it. It's a project management tool, but it's very like color coordinated and it's been a really great tool for us um, for assigning work and also managing what people are doing. Um, I know there's a few project management tools out there, but that one's been helpful for us. That's great. Duncan? Yeah, um, we obviously use Salesforce CRM to manage all the sales reps and customer success reps. One tool that we use is the whisper mode on the, um, on the so we can, the managers actually can hear what the reps are saying on the phone and whisper in their ear and coach them through even remotely. Uh, rather than being next to them in the office and standing over and jumping on the phone and doing a takeover. And anyone who does sales will understand that. I'm not sure if, if, you, do, if you don't do sales, you probably won't get that. But essentially whispering, whispering in their ear and coaching them through the sale, that's been really helpful, that tool, with New Voice Media. And that's just if you've got an integrated phone system with your CRM. Um, Obviously, Hangouts, you know, Slack, webcams, making sure the reps have webcams at home um, and not just a laptop, but, but a second monitor because, you know, it just makes you more productive. If you've got a second monitor. We actually allowed reps to take their whole office station home, standing desk, uh, second monitor, everything. So it's actually kind of like cleared out the, the office, really. But they've got a proper workstation at home, not just like a laptop on their bed. You know, so that, that was important, making sure they've got a good workstation. Um, and then from the fun side, uh, we use jackbox.tv, which is a multiplayer game. Um, you know, you can play party games and multiplayer games, which we do on a Friday and we send like Uber Eats vouchers or we, we give them Uber Eats vouchers to redeem and have home delivery for their lunch and stuff like that as well. So that those are some of the other things that we're doing. Great. And at the economic partnership and the tech council, we've been using Microsoft teams, uh, we got integrated with that um, earlier this year, last year, and it's a great resource for us to get on. Like maybe you said, using, utilizing those Slack type channels and then making every call a video call, having that face has been really important for us. 
So let's talk about um, maybe some new rules that you've seen or had to institute as you are managing the culture from remote workforces. Um, let's start with you, Kristen. What do you think? I know some of your team is remote already, but what are some of the rules that, that folks at home that are watching this can help manage some of the culture that they're working with now? Yeah. So, yeah. so in terms of some of the rules, we, we do something called dailies um, and we require that everyone posts in the Slack. We have like a, a daily channel and at the end of the day, it can be, it doesn't have to be like a very long message. Um, so we try to make sure it's not to make sure they're like judging them based on how much work they do. It's just so we all know what each other's working on. Um, we actually had started implementing that even before we started working remotely because our remote team had requested it because they felt like very disjointed from our current team. Um, but now that we're all remote, we all see like the value in it so much more. Um, so we all take time to just put in even it could be one sentence or it could be a whole paragraph depending on what you did that day. Um, and people will even add in like fun stuff as well. Like I mentioned, like it doesn't always have to be even work stuff or like sometimes we even throw in some personal stuff so we all know everyone's on the same page and people can comment on the thread of it um, and then you also find out where people get stuck so they can post that in daily as well like I'm stuck here and, and really making sure that no one is you know the bottleneck for something getting done um, so that's what we use on that piece and then we do use Monday as I mentioned um, for project management and it's really great for uh, we for people marking off like where they are in their progress of each uh, task that we have. Uh, so we're, we make sure people use that a lot more than they were before. Um, and you just realize how, you know, to keep actually uh, in tune with what everyone's doing, putting these processes in place just makes such a big difference. And then one other uh, thing we do actually more with the clients side of things with trying to like engage because we actually go to a lot of events. Um, I know we've talked about like internal team, but keeping up with our clients, we started doing webinars like this, um, which have been really great for engaging with clients and actually feel like we can almost, you know, get more benefit of one-on-ones because people are taking meetings with us that, that are in other states that we would have had to travel to to build that. Um, but now they're sitting at home, so they're like more likely to take a webinar or do a, a session with us. Great. And... PJ at Fat Merchant, you guys have always had a keen eye on, on culture. What are some of the, the roles that have been helpful for this? Yeah, culture is, you know, culture is huge for us at Fat Merchant. We, we thrive on it. I wouldn't say that we have these rules. You know, when I see the word rules, I, you know, kind of cringe a little from an HR perspective, um, but really just kind of our cadence that we have every day with our daily standups with each of our leaders from all the teams. They have that every morning huddle. Um, that we traditionally keep with. So it's not too, too different with the exception of like my team. I never used to do that. Now we're doing it. Um, but we have noticed, um, you know, to your point, the rules that we need to keep everybody productive. We've noticed an increase in productivity um, in a, from a remote perspective, but I don't believe it's because of the rules that, you know, we have in structure, but more in line with the fact that we've had an increased interest in actually fat merchants. So, you know, sales have increased new customers. It's creating more demand, more productivity as a result. But I would also like to say that that is really the talent that is driving that as well. We're very much the culture of um, get shit done as we know in our core values and being one team. Um, so there aren't any distractions. And, and that is uh, one of the reasons we're all in the same boat uh, as far as, keeping the productivity going. Um, so really the rules are just get shit done and be one team and create joy at the end of the day. Those are rules. That's great. Duncan, what about you? What are some of the, the boundaries and, and new best practices for managing culture and teams remotely? Um, you know, we haven't, we haven't really had to change much, to be honest. Um, I've always had a certain number of operating rhythms in place for the managers that they have to do. So, you know, they have to do their daily huddles. They have to do, you know, their 20 call qualities a week for their sales team. They have to do their one-to-one -one weekly as well. So um, I think in the office, if you've got a management team and they're kind of, they look busy and they're just running around, they're in the team, like what are they really doing? I think it's going to expose a lot of companies now who don't really have any operating cadences uh, on a weekly basis, you know, like their managers are sitting in, their own home office and how are they managing their reps whereas if you've got everything set up where they were doing those things before in the office it's kind of translated easily over 
Um, you know, obviously having those, th- you, you, you just got to have those three or four things in place that the managers do weekly and the reps do weekly. There's not really, there's not really much different to what we were doing in the office. If I'm honest, the, the only thing that we're missing out really is that, you know, team relationship and, and team building element that you, you get in the office. All of our technology is done remotely. All of our sales can be done remotely. Um, you know, I think, it, I, I, I think it just exposes teams in this environment that don't have, you know, their shit together. And, you know, the managers were just sitting in teams and not really adding actually much value. They were just kind of sitting there, you know, chatting with the reps or trying to help them. I think, you know, you've got to get those operational rhythms right. Um, and when you come back into the office, like it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to build a better team and make, and make you a better culture anyway. So it's a perfect time to do it. Great. Graham, what about you? What are some best practices you can share with us? Yeah, so I'm not really a big rules guy, uh, but I do agree that like our company, we have a morning stand up, which I mentioned uh, to, to the folks about. We also have a team meeting Monday, Wednesday and Fridays, and there's an agenda for that. But we've been trying to make it really light. Uh, I want folks to bring stuff to the team, um, you know, any trouble, any lighthearted news that they found. So we really have been operating almost business as usual, uh, you know, but we have been checking in. So if someone um, you know, is struggling. It's pretty easy to tell because uh, you haven't gotten a text from them. You haven't seen a Slack from them. Uh, their cameras are off. And, and, and so we, we try to at least start every meeting with our clients um, with our cameras on because I think it's really important to make that personal connection. You have that voice that you hear all the time. And now it's actually an opportunity. Everyone's in their pajamas. Everyone, you know, I was talking to someone in Minnesota the other day. They had a hat on. And, and so you kind of get that, that less, um, uh, you know, business professional feel and you do start to make a connection. And so we, we've been trying to do that amongst our team and amongst uh, our clients as well. I think it's really important to have that connection and this is a perfect time to do it. So no, not so much rules, but just sort of kind of how we govern our, our, our day-to-day interactions with folks. Well, and all of you have touched on the concept that this is a bit of a transition. Have you encountered Anyone that's struggling with the social isolation, having trouble keeping up with their normal productivity, and, and found a way to help them out remotely. Uh, Peter, let's start with you. Yeah, um, as far as, you know, I wouldn't say so much struggle, uh, but, you know, everybody really misses everyone. So I think that's the biggest struggle. We're so close. We're truly the, the fat fam. We, we call ourselves a fat merchant. So um, that's been uh, like a common struggle. Everybody's really ready to get back to it. Um, so really what we've, we've advised people to do um, that are experiencing that, we just remind them, you know, get up every day, you know, have a plan for your day, schedule as if you're going into the office, get dressed, um, keep, um, keep up a schedule that you're gonna keep to, and then you're gonna, when you're gonna end your day, end your day, and then leave, and then go back to your home, if you will. So very much keeping that balance, reminding them that that exercise is very important as well. Um, Having those one-on-ones, also anybody that has been, you know, concerned about, we have an EAP program that we've, um, you know, advertised as well that people can call into, um, you know, confidentially and free, but really all in all, um, people have been really embracing it and uh, we're just really, really looking forward to seeing each other really soon in our new office. Great. Kristen, um, what about you? Have you had anybody that has had some hiccups as they're transitioning to remote and you've helped them through anything? Yeah, I think one of the most interesting things was we actually are of our interns, the two were graduating and we could see that they were really like struggling with that, which I know a lot of like graduates are um, because they've worked so hard and now they're missing one of them. She was, you know, her whole family was supposed to come in and all that. And I think it's just being empathetic to the situation because I could tell they didn't want to complain about it because they know there's bigger problems, but it's still, you know, a big deal to them. And we also have certain team members whose family works in the medical space and you could see it was like weighing on them. Um, So I think just not like turning a blind eye to those pieces. Um, We kind of got the team together and for the, for the grads, we sent out some, um, some flowers that like surprised them and like tried to just make sure that we're giving them, you know, their 
excitement on that side of things. Um, but I mean, it's definitely a weird time for everyone. And I think different people react differently. That's one of the things I've learned the most is in dealing with a team is how certain people want to just like work all the time, which is also not great. And trying to tell them like, don't work all the time. Like, like, like PJ said, check out because I feel like that's not healthy either. <laughs> and then you have some people who are distracted. Um, so the one-on-ones have been really great. And I've done more one-on-ones with team members that I didn't even talk to as much. Um, so that's kind of the way that we've gotten through it. Great. And Graham, what about you? Have you have an example to share? Yeah, we actually have a very unique situation within our customer success team. So we have a, one of our CSMs, uh, we, we work with her, she's going through grad school and she was doing a rotating program where she was out of country. And she actually got caught in South Africa um, as this was all heating up. So you can imagine the stress of, you know, being away from your family, being away from your loved ones. Um, you know, they, they were shutting down airports and, and she actually, I think the last count and she finally got back home, she had like eight or nine different flights that were booked to try to get her back home, at least to the States. So you can imagine if you're trying to keep up not only customer calls from across the globe, but the stress of just being away. So we really work with her. Um, and it was, it was an interesting pull. The entire, the entire organization kind of got behind her and like, how are you doing? Uh, what can we do to help? Cause that, that's a very unique situation that I don't think I could handle well um, knowing myself. And so it was just uh, one of those things that I don't think you'll ever encounter again um, in the workplace. Yeah, and Cassandra, you're talking to folks from all over the place, being in talent recruitment. What what are you seeing? Yeah, I think a lot of it right now is that everyone has different home situations. So on top of transitioning with your current job, there's other things in your life that are happening in the background, whether it's children or family members are also going through a transition. And a lot of that is just kind of managing your expectations. Like your day is not gonna look the same as it did when you would wake up and come into the office and then, you know, go home in the evening. So um, as long as tasks are getting done and, you know, things are getting accomplished, it's okay if it looks a little bit different, you know, manage your expectations and your time um, with what works for you. And um, everyone's on different schedules and stuff. So just figuring out what works, because I think if you have this idea that it's going to be the same as what it was when you were in the office, you're going to feel less accomplished, but it's okay whether you're just maybe, you know, waking up a little earlier or people have kids to give lunch to and stuff like that. So just being realistic with your expectations of yourself and um, feeling accomplished still and knowing you're doing the best you can. Yeah, I think that's a great point to make is understanding that we're working on different cadence and everybody's got different elements that they have to deal with throughout the day. So communicating that when you've, you've got something you handle for your home, kind of making sure your team knows so you're not ignoring them. David, is there anything you want to add here having worked with remote teams for a while now? Yeah, the, the only thing I would add to this, obviously we're doing all of the above. Um, when, when this first came out in the UK and we started work from home a bit earlier and in the US, we, we have given reps the option to take unpaid leave, to take paid leave, to use their holiday, um, you know, maybe do some kind of part-time role. So we, we did kind of give reps the option to do that. If they wanted to kind of, you know, not work and get use their holiday through this period, that was absolutely fine. Uh, we didn't have anyone take that initially. Um, we've had one rep that has been struggling to handle all the training elements from home because all their roommates are you know just doing nothing at home and he's finding finding it quite stressful so he's asked to kind of now do that um and 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 or, or just accept inbound calls and not do any training and 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 takes take kind of like a part-time role uh but we, we we're open and flexible to what reps want to do you know if they want to They've always got a job here when, we, when they when they when we come back so if they want to just take their holiday you know they've got like three or four weeks holiday um, you know, they can take some of that, you know, even if it's just two or three days a week, they want to work. We don't mind. Um, you know, most reps won't take that. So that's, we're never going to be in a position where we don't have a business, but for the, for the small percentage of people that are having mental health issues and struggling to kind of interact and, and do their job, then we do have options there and flexibility. Great. Certainly flexibility seems to be a, a critical element. So let's take a minute. Let's imagine if we're on the other side of this, we're starting to transition, getting back to things as they were, even though it's going to be an entirely new tomorrow. Let's talk about, you know, what are some of the things that you all are talking about within your organization now of possibly continuing more flexible 
work from home policies? Are there pros that you've seen, cons that you've seen? What are some of your thoughts around making this more um, normal part of business? Kristen, let's start with you. Yeah, um, I think that most of, like once we got on a roll, <laughs> actually most of the thing new processes implemented have been really beneficial. Um, as I mentioned, because our team does have five members that were remote um, that are all in different time zones, by the way, we have someone in the Philippines, we have someone in, in LA and we have someone in central time zone as well. So it's been an interesting change to have the rest of us all, you know, making sure like that we can incorporate them on the one on ones more and, and we're really pulling them in. And that's been just a huge benefit. Um, like I can already see so many of our team members never even really got to interact with our team member in the Philippines very often. And now we've made sure to have like a virtual happy hour where she's involved um, or even our LA team member and things like that. Uh, so we'll definitely be keeping most of like at least some of the, the touch bases, maybe less often, but at least monthly, um, so that I think our team can, can really come together. Um, and I think it's, it's overall, I know a few of the other panelists mentioned it, but, but it, it, it's an interesting time too, to see the team come together. Um, and uh, it's almost like, like uh, you know, almost like a weird bonding time as well um, during this. So I think just, just keeping positive, but also like, we will definitely keep like our daily going into the new, um, the new, like, whatever the new normal is after the, <laughs> after the Oh, is she there? Oh, can you hear me? Oh, now I can. Yes. <laughs> I can't hear her now, but um, Cassandra, do you want to go next? <laughs> sure, yeah. So, I mean, I think even right now, like we were saying, everyone's lives are just so different than what we were originally expecting. So I don't even know if right now is a true example of what working remote is like. A lot of people, even that we've spoken to on the candidate side is they're saying like, yeah, we worked remote all the time, but this is nothing like what it used to be. And so um, I think in our office, we will most likely continue to come in office and remain flexible to working from home. We do have different um, incentives and everyone's different as far as what they even want to do. We have some people on our team who um, are dying to get back in the office, never wanted to work remote and some people enjoying that flexibility. So um, just continuing case by case and what people like, but we really thrive on our office environment. A lot of the energy and things that we do with our team is collaborative, learning from each other. So I think having an office to go to will always be an important part of our culture and how we do things. Great. Graham, what about you? So I, I've, I've been working remote on and off since 2001. Uh, so there's, I've been in a couple of different models. I really like the hybrid. I think moving forward at Accent, what I'd love to see us get, get into is we're, we're really productive right now and we're, we're all dispersed. I do love the ability to come into the office and just get things done as, as other folks have said, right? So those are the days where you're going to come in, maybe we'll go out to lunch where you have that bonding, you get to understand how people inter interact with each other face to face so that you can pick up on the social cues when you're back looking across the screen like this. So I think that's probably what I, you know, within my team and I, I would love to bring it to the organization as we get into that hybrid uh, mentality, right? So maybe the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, um, you know, if you're geographically dispersed uh, once a quarter. Uh, I've also worked in environments where we've set up regional meetups where every couple of weeks, you know, the Northeast gets together, or the Denver area gets together. I think that model is, is probably, you're going to see a lot of that um, in some of these larger organizations, simply savings on real estate, savings on commuting, uh, me mental health costs. If you're up in the Northeast or in a, a, you know, Atlanta or one of those areas where you're constantly on a train or a bus, um, you know, you, the wear and tear builds up. And I think this, this is starting to show folks that there is a better way of life. And once we settle into the new norm, I would expect organizations, including ours, to, to kind of adapt to that. Yeah, that's interesting. Duncan, what are you guys thinking? Um, it, I personally don't want to go fully remote at the moment for the business. I think the way that we're able to get through these times at the moment and the morale and the culture that we've built is the product of everyone being in the office and building relationships and friendships. And that's why we're able to get through these tough times. I feel like if we were just a purely remote business, um, you know, it, it, it's very difficult, especially to train a lot of junior people that we have in the company remotely all at once, you know, five or six people at a time in different, in different places. I, I feel like it, 
it's it, it's not as productive for our organization to be fully remote. I definitely see a hybrid structure being uh, possible, you know, like a couple of days a week remote. Definitely, uh, I see that as being possible, especially if you're overperforming in your role. Um, I just don't think everyone wants to work remote as well. So I don't, I don't really want to force it on people because some people don't even want it. You know, some people in the sales team, the CSM team want to be in the office. They want to be, you know, they want to be around their friends. They want to be having fun. They want to be kind of going to lunch together, playing pool together, whatever. Right. So I definitely see, you know, for the more experienced reps, uh, a hybrid structure whereby if they're performing at a certain level, you know, they can, you know, have that freedom to work remotely, but you know, want to see some reps are working well remotely. Some aren't at the moment, you know, some are performing, some aren't. So I don't, I don't think a one side, this is kind of like we've been forced into a one size fits all situation and it's what a, whatever works best for your company. You know, if, if your company is crushing it at the moment, everyone's loving it, work remotely, that that's awesome. But you know, in, in terms of our, you know, our culture, it's, it's built from everyone being together in that team environment. And I think that's really hard to build initially remotely. Uh, I think you can go to a remote, but you kind of need people in the office building those relationships at first. So yeah, I'm open to a hybrid structure da- down the line. Um, you know, but at the moment it's, it's definitely been, um, I definitely want to kind of get back to the office and, and get everyone, um, you know, uh, with each other again, for sure. Sure. And PJ, you know, with a a new office on the horizon, I'm sure you all are are anxious to get back in. But do you have any thoughts on on going to a more robust work from home policy? Right. To your point, we're really excited about our new office space. So um, I don't see it anytime soon. However, I will say we do have a few folks that do work remote. So we are um, flexible uh, in our mindset. But our culture, to, to kind of mirror what David and Cassandra and Kristen were saying, that, you know, it's, you know, in our culture to be face-to-face, um, and that is what's bringing us together and what's making us stronger to be able to do this the way we're doing it so well now, um, being remote. But this is a very unique situation. Like I said earlier, we're all in the same boat. I don't consider it a true... Uh, remote uh, way of life. I mean, nothing is open. Um, we can't you know, shoot out Starbucks or grab a lunch. It, it's not a traditional remote. So um, always keep an open mind uh, at Front Merchant. But uh, we love working um, together in the office. It truly is part of our culture. It's something that I do interview with as well. People ask, oh, you know, what are the remote options? We do have some flexibility. However, I always say we in an ideal world, we all like to be together in the office uh, every day. It really um, helps us. That's why we've been so successful today. Oh, great. So, you know, you've mentioned a lot of wonderful tools. Again, at orlando.org slash COVID-19, we're going to share a resource page that will highlight a lot of the tools that we've talked about today. Um, what's some advice on places that people can keep up with trends, new software that's coming out that's supportive of this. Is there anything that somebody wants to share on different places and and maybe magazines or websites that you follow, blogs, that help you keep up with these trends to keep your teams informed? Kristen, let's start with you. Um, I'm trying to think of the main places. I mean, I spend a lot of time on, on LinkedIn and have followed a lot of really great people who've created content. Um, so I think that that's where I've gotten most of, of my tips and obviously attending webinars and things like this is great. Um, so I don't have exactly a specific place I'd go to. I will say the last question, I totally misheard what you asked if we would keep doing it. I thought you meant if we kept doing the policies. Um, I was gonna say, we, we also like working from the office and I think we all miss that and are ready to go back. Um, but in terms of, of keeping up to date, I don't have any specific go-to places. So I'll let, pass that off to someone else. Graham, what about you? So we do a lot of, uh, we have what's called the water cooler Slack channel. Uh, and folks, you know, look, everyone has different resources. I'm a big RSS guy, if, if folks remember that. So I collect new, news information from across the globe. If I see something that's interesting, whether it's customer success related, whether it's remote working and trying to get, get through these tough times, I, I'll post in there. Our CEO is very active in, in that channel as well. And it's a, it's a good um, it's a good supplement to sort of our morning uh, kickoffs or our marketing uh, leader 
really pulls together a bunch of company news and, and sends that back out as well. So again, I read a ton of content every day. LinkedIn, uh, like Kristen said, is a great place. There's a lot of folks posting good stuff, but you know, Google, anything else, there, there, there's some good sources out there. Cassandra, what's one of your go-to's? So like everyone said, LinkedIn is always going to be a big one, especially just being a recruiter. That is literally my most common social media now at this point, always on LinkedIn. But um, another thing I found is just in my role, I'm really lucky to be able to talk to so many different people every day and um, just ask them, like, what are you doing and getting ideas from other people. So in some way, not losing that networking aspect, like still connect with people that maybe you don't work with immediately or engage with people on different um, social networks like LinkedIn, like everyone's really open and supportive right now and wants to talk to you. And so just asking questions and people are very responsive and have some great recommendations. So um, just not being afraid to ask and communicate with people that maybe you would have seen at a networking event, but not somebody that you talk to daily in the office or something. Great. PJ, what about you? Yeah, just to kind of reiterate what everyone has already said, in addition to those tools, uh, one of the things I've been lucky enough to do is to reach out to my fellow colleagues in the HR community um, through Society of Human Resource Management, um, sharing ideas um, there, um, also connecting with remote other companies that are like 100% remote. I would love to talk to those HR professionals there to say, Hey, what are you doing? You're a hundred percent remote. Um, exactly. How do you, how does that work? Um, because again, this is a very unique situation where we're all driven here. Um, but when they do that on the day to day, I'm curious to see what types of industries those are and, and how they handle their different policies and procedures. So really leveraging the HR community. Oh, great. And Duncan, what about you? Is there a source of, of trends that you look for? Um, I, I do communicate a lot with uh, other sales leaders, uh, some of the top sales leaders in the industry on LinkedIn, um, in a lot of uh, you know private consulting groups and open open groups as well for sales leaders like Modern Sales Pro, uh, Revenue Collective as well. Um, one of the one of the things I found really helpful as well is joining the Facebook groups where our customers are, like the restaurant owners groups, the retail owners groups and getting some really good insight on the ground of what's actually going on in their specific uh, specific industry right now. For example, like a lot of the restaurants are now getting the PPP loans through, the small business loans through. They're now freeing up that money to you know buy our equipment. We sell POS systems. Um, you know, they've got money to pay their staff. They've, they've got some kind of cash injection. You know, three weeks ago, it was complete turmoil. Everyone was panicking and struggling. So it is a very dynamic environment at the moment. You've got to stay on top of what's going on. So yeah, stay, going where your customers are and seeing you know what's going on is one thing and then learning from other leaders in who do your role uh, and at a higher level as well is the other thing I'm doing at the moment to stay on top of things. Great. So I've got one more question and then we'll go to some Q&A. Everyone who's watching at home, please submit your questions in the Q&A and we'll get to them next. I want to make sure that we talk about some of the fun and, and you referenced it a few times, but what are some of the fun things that you're doing to keep up company morale and really just keeping everybody excited in a time that's fairly uncertain? PJ, let's start with you. Oh gosh, we've uh, done a lot of things in my mind to date and some of it has been, you know, led by leadership and a lot of it's been organic um, because our culture is so unique and fun. Um, we're just a fun group of people naturally. So um, we're keeping them highly engaged through um, just our standard meetings. We do our Monday morning pump up. So we get someone every Monday to get everybody jazzed for the week. And we all come together at the end of the week. We do a, a company all hands and we do a happy hour. Um, we've done the fitness series, which is um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we do like a 10 minute move uh, where everybody gets up and stretches together. Um, and then we have a two days a week, uh, 30 minute uh, fitness uh, session. This is again, led by internal um, associates in the company. Um, so we also have the mind series as well. That's keeping everybody engaged and fun. 
we've had the organic um, TikTok challenge um, where people are actually tagging each other in, um, in Slack and challenging the next person to a TikTok. So I had to learn that over the weekend. Um, and so that was a really a lot of fun and it keeps everybody engaged in my mind. We keep the fun going. Um, we've done like a professional day. So everybody dresses up professionally. And again, these are like organic things that people are saying, why don't we do this? Um, Blazer Thursday, just, just fun things that is so in our culture to do those, those types of things. Um, we're also gonna be doing yoga as well. Um, so just really just keeping together as a group, even though we're, we're apart. Graham, what about you all? Any fun, fun tricks? So at Accent, we, we, we're doing pretty much what everyone else is doing, right? We haven't done the fitness thing yet. Uh, hopefully, we're doing that on our own. But um, we, we do the company virtual happy hours. We have a show and tell. We have the morning stand-ups. Um, tonight, our, our, at, at about 4.30, we're doing our, uh, our happy hour. It's trivia night. Um, so it's, it's a good way to get everyone together, uh, those who want to participate. You actually see folks that don't necessarily show their faces during the, the morning stand-ups, um, show up at those happy hours and you get to meet your, your colleagues that way. So pretty much standard for what I've seen from you know, my peers across the, the industry. Um, but I do like the idea that PJ brought up about adding in some additional um, games and, and stretching and things like that, because it does get tiring sitting a lot more uh, these days. All right, Dr. Cassandra Blue Wave, you guys are always having fun in the office. What have you been doing remotely? Yeah, I mean, definitely sticking to kind of what everyone else said as well, but just like themed happy hours. I know last week we did a themed happy hour. Everyone um, had a Charlie theme, our CEO. So just funny backgrounds and different outfits and just trying to keep it light because, you know, it's still Friday. I'm looking forward to what it's going to be today. I don't know what it is, but um, just still communicating and being silly. It's not always having to be work talk and um, still being personal and getting to know what people are doing and staying up with. Great, Kristen, what about you all? Uh, yeah, we, we are um, an influencer marketing company. Uh, so we actually have been engaging with a lot of our influencers as well. And we consider them kind of members of our team by proxy. <laughs> um, so we did a fun spirit week with our whole team that participated in each day of the, of the spirit week, kind of like in high school where it would be like throwback day and everyone like dresses their favorite character. And then there was like, decade day and then we did a teal day because our colors teal and a full glam where people like wear full like gowns and stuff um and i could not believe that like every member of our team participated um in terms of like all like 17 and they went like all out like we and we come on our all hands in the morning and we all wanted to see what everyone was like crazy thing was going on um it was hilarious so i think everyone loved that week we'll probably do it again just because it really boosted morale so much um and then with pj tiktok has been i think the other biggest thing we're doing like a company tiktok where we're all sending a clip and having our social team splice it together to do a group company tiktok so we we have a lot of tiktokers in our network so we're also trying to grow our own so it's a, a win-win for us but it's also just been really fun regardless of if we had that aspect um so i it's just been fun to see how creative people have been oh that's fantastic duncan what about you all have you had any spirit weeks or are fun things to keep morale going up it, it's a difficult one it's it's a combination of um you know, with, with, with morale, like the biggest way to keep morale up is ensure people are earning money as well. You know, they are bringing sales and they feel confident that their role, they feel competent. So, you know, we've, we've, do, we've, we've doubled down on the training, a lot of role playing, a lot of kind of like training sessions, one on one, like sharpening their skills. Obviously, they're earning money. They're going to be happy. They can hit their goals. You know, it's the fuel for their goals. That's the biggest thing. Games. Yeah, we do that once a week on the Friday. Like we do the Jackbox TV. We do Fibbage and Quiplash. Um, and we also do like we have the Wheel of Names, which is a virtual spin the wheel. So when someone gets a deal in, you can basically spin the wheel virtually on the computer and everyone can see it and put different prizes on there. But those are just like things we do here and there that the main thing is just doubling down and making the training more fun, like getting people better at their role and, and earning more money and main, making sure they have a job as well, making sure they're, you know, we're fighting for survival and we're making sure that we've got a business. So I think that we've got to be fun, but we've got to be realistic as well. So that, that's kind of what we're doing over here. Sure. 
Well, thank you for all of that. that that's exciting. We do have a question that just came in from the audience. I know several people in our office have talked about this. Is anyone dealing with Zoom fatigue or webinar fatigue as, as we're here on another one? Is there anything that someone wants to, to comment on that? Graham, go ahead. Yeah, so it, it's interesting. I find myself, and I made a comment about before, uh, Zoom, Zoom fatigue definitely happening. Um, I'm a big, very animated, and I like walking around, and I found myself in sort of this new world, sitting down a lot more and trying to make those connections with folks that I might have just walked before. So I've actually tried to take more meetings where I'm, I'm up and moving around and, and not on camera all the time. So start to call, kind of get off, come back in just so I can stand up, move around. Cause I, I find it a little bit, um, you know, to be sitting all day, I, I don't feel as productive. I don't feel as, uh, as, as energized. And I think you are starting to see that across our organization. Of, of folks kind of just sitting down and not having the energy that they had on Monday. And so I really am trying to promote folks getting up and moving around a little bit more. Yeah. So yeah, the zoom fatigue is definitely there. Anybody and else want to weigh too. in on that? Say that again. I, I was saying I'm actually noticing. So we, we have certain clients that we talk to quite a bit during the week and I'm noticing even with them, they're kind of, they're getting down a little bit. So I, I'm trying to turn it off as well and say, Hey, look, look, stand up a little bit, move around, take it on the phone. Yeah. Anybody else want to weigh in, PJ? Yeah, I don't um, think there's been too much Zoom fatigue. I, th I think mainly because we like to see each other. Um, we're limiting, obviously, one-on-one. -on so for me, they're not so much, you know, huge group meetings, except for when we do the all hands and come together as a, as a team. So those are really fun. The one-on-ones, um, you know, are are I don't know, to me, re-energizing, uh, you know, being that recruiter side of me, um, I get my energy from seeing people and talking to people. So if I'm not talking to people, I am going to be uh, fatigued. So it's very much for, for me personally, I, I need to be doing it more. So um, I do miss the, the stand-up desks from the office. Um, so that, uh, but again, getting up and stretching is, is hugely important, but uh, from a Zoom perspective, no, I need to see, I need to see and talk to people. Great. Anybody else want to weigh in? Got another question from the audience here. Kimberly wants to know, um, we know the obvious work from home challenges that we've been talking about here, but what's your greatest COVID-19 related challenge and what have you been doing to combat it? Yeah, I can take that. Um, I, our biggest challenge was but it, especially in a sales environment, it all comes down to the mentality of the sales reps and where their head's at. And the problem is, is when we were hit with all the COVID news, um, they were soaking up everything the US media is giving and not really following what else was going on in the world where the previous countries have been hit. They, 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 for them, there was no end in sight. So it was very much like if, if your sales reps have a negative, not like a negative mental state, and then you speak to a customer and the customer's kind of like negative as well or not really sure. Like, I don't really know when I'm going to open, what's going to happen. It's basically impossible to sell anyone. So the biggest challenge we had was, you know, I literally had all the sales guys on a, on a Zoom chat and I was like, give me some positive news that you found out in the last couple of days. No one could give me anything. So I knew I had a problem in terms of mentality then. So I started educating them with a lot of stuff that was coming out of, you know, China, Wuhan, you know, with the, um, the epicenter moving out of lockdown, you know, Italy and Australia and all the positive things, you know, that other countries are doing and, you know, giving the guys hope that, you know, in six to eight weeks, things are going to go back to normal. The businesses should be using this downtime to prepare, um, you know, to go on the offensive when things reopen. There's going to be a lot of pent up demand and frustration, you know, especially in like restaurant holidays, bars, everything like that. You know, businesses need to be ready for that. So I think the biggest challenge was, the mental state of the employees and getting them looking at the positive sides of things and then being able to pass that onto the customers um, and ultimately win business. And that, that's, a, that's really helped us over the last few weeks and enabled us to perform at the same level as previous months, uh, even though we are getting less leads from the restaurant side, you know, on the grocery side that we sell to, they're doing really well. So, you know, if, if all your reps are just hearing U.S. media news, and they're not really educated outside of what's going on in the U.S., it's going to be very difficult to sell people. So I would definitely do that exercise with your own team and, um, and see where their head's at. That's the first thing I'd do. 
great. Kristen, what about you? Um, I definitely think the uncertainty was probably one of the biggest challenges, but also from like a more business perspective, events um, are a big part of our sales channel uh, for getting new leads. And like we go to big conferences and they all started being closed. And actually one of the biggest conferences, Expo West, was right closed. It, that was like the first closing, I think, that we realized, oh, something's happening. And we rely on that for a lot of leads. Um, so I think our sales team at first was like, oh, no, this is like, 30 to 40% of where our leads that we close come from are from these events that are being closed. So we all had a powwow where we got together and we're like, how can we make the most of this? Like make lemonade out of lemons, I guess. And we um, came up with an idea that we would put together offers for all these people who couldn't go to the events and we would research who was all attending and reach out to them saying, sorry, we didn't get to see you there. Um, and what's crazy is we've actually seen probably a better response and conversion rate than actually attending the events because people like are sad that they couldn't go and couldn't meet you. So our open rates are higher and things like that. So um, I think that we were all in like a, oh, oh crap place <laughs> for a while. And then we, we were like, wait, I think let's just think creatively. Um, and I think that that's really important too, to get your team involved because our team is actually what kind of came up with that. That wasn't me. They came to me with that idea. Um, so just making sure to keep, like I, I tell everyone, there's no stupid ideas right now. Like just throw anything at me, like trying to get those um, out there. And that's how we made it through that challenge. Yeah, great. So we've got another question here that came in. Anthony is curious, what are you all thinking as we start to plan ahead for when we get to go back to office life? What are some of the things you all are working on now to make sure you're prepared um, for when people come back into the office? PJ, can I start with you? Sure. Yes, of course. Um, we're working on that. You know, it's a work in progress. We're, you know, going to make sure that the workplace is, of course, safe um, and ensure that we have all the appropriate supplies, cleaning supplies, masks, gloves, whatever we need to be in compliance with the CDC recommendations and make sure that we have uh, utmost safety set up and prepared. Um, that's our number one priority. So um, as far as, as getting that together, we're going to be working with, obviously, um, the governor um, and seeing what the the recommendations are going to be in the plan and the different phases that are going to roll out and we're, we're probably going to mirror a lot of that um, and and just be in compliance and assure everyone that we will have a very safe, healthy um, work environment and make sure that our, our team is well. Great. Cassandra, what are you all talking about now at Blue Wave for returning to the office? Yeah, we're all definitely really excited to get back to the office. Hopefully sooner than later, we had an office expansion that finished up right as this whole transition happened. But um, at the same time, we really want to make sure that we are compliant with whatever is recommended. And so just keeping a close eye on that um, and just doing what, what's best. I don't know what that is going to be, but just paying attention and being aware. So when it happens, we're ready and prepared for it. Oh, fantastic. Well, it looks like we have addressed just about every question you guys have covered so many fantastic topics today thank you so much for joining us we really truly appreciate it um, we want to make sure that we're keeping up and delivering the best webinars and information to our audience so if you can take a quick poll my colleague joe is going to pull that up for you it'll just take a few moments to fill that out and we'll be able to deliver even more incredible content that's going to help us through this information. So we're also really wanting to make sure that everyone is aware, orlando.org slash COVID-19. There's a great resource page there with lots of information. It is updated as quickly as possible, definitely daily. So you see definitely links from other organizations in the community, breaking information that we're getting from our local leaders. And a new service that we just launched this week, we wanna make sure everyone has the time to see it. It's called the Business Recovery Assistance Collaborative Engagement Program, BRACE. It's a little bit shorter and easier to remember. So BRACE was created by the Orlando Economic Partnership in collaboration with business resource organizations and other chambers around the region to really provide some recovery assistance to small and medium-sized businesses. So we wanted to make sure that, let me turn this off there. 
And we wanted to make sure that businesses had a place to call. They could talk to a human being, ask their questions, and our team is standing by to make sure we can answer everything for you and get you some information quickly. So again, that's orlando.org slash COVID-19. Check out the BRACE program. And then as we're all trying to stay upbeat and help our economy move forward, we want you to pick up Orlando. And this is a new social campaign that we started, hashtag pick up Orlando. You can pick up tech, you can pick up food, you can pick up a new contract, you can pick up uh, volunteerism. So any way that you find that you can help pick up our community and our region, tag it Pick Up Orlando, tag it Pick Up Tech, and we'll be sure to share that as well. We want to support all of the businesses in our region and make sure that as we start to evolve through the other side of this pandemic that, that we're prepared for a happy economy on the other side. So thank you so much for joining us today. We will share the resources page that Project Orlando helped collaborate for us. So we really appreciate everyone today, Duncan, Kristen, Cassandra, Graham, PJ, y'all were fantastic. Everybody stay safe and have a great day. Thanks.